Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, who is the creator of all things, established the spiritual law of the consequences of sin. And I think we would all agree everyone has done something wrong at one time or another in their lives, probably multiple things. And God has determined that the consequences of that is death, uh, physical death and spiritual death, which is eternal separation from God. But God uh, loved us so much, he didn't want that to be the final word. I mean, the infinite, uh, almighty God who is complete within himself still loved us enough that uh, he wants to spend eternity with us. So he didn't want death, the consequences of sin, to be the final uh, word. So uh, there had to be a substitute, uh, man for man, human for human, um, to take the consequences uh, for humanity. Um, and, and the only thing that would work, I mean, think about it, guys, this is the only thing that makes sense. Um, the only thing that would work is the incarnation, which is mean God becoming man so that he could be our substitute and take the consequences of our sin upon himself. And, and so Jesus came and uh, died on the cross, taking the consequences that our sin deserved, the sinless God becoming, um, becoming human. And, and then something really incredible took place. The only way for this whole thing to work is not only did Jesus have to take our sin upon himself, take the consequences uh, upon himself, but uh, we needed to become righteous in his sight. And, and so what he accomplished on the cross was um, what I refer to as the great exchange. Um, he being sinless God in the flesh took our sin upon himself, and then he gave us his righteous standing before God. And so we find that in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 5, uh, verse uh, 21. Let me turn over there real quick with you. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who had no sin, that's Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, that's the only way salvation works. That's the reason that um, Jesus is the only way to heaven, because he is the only one that removed that which uh, divided us from God, and, and that is our sin and its consequences. And that can only be accomplished through the Incarnation. I mean, you, you couldn't have anybody else be a substitute for humanity other than another human, um, but it had to be a sinless human. And, and that can only be accomplished by God becoming flesh and blood. But you know, there's a lot of other advantages to the incarnation also. I mean, salvation being one of the, the biggest ones, but uh, another great benefit of God becoming man um, is this, is that he understands what it is to be tempted. Yet when he was tempted, he never uh, gave in to the temptation and never sinned. But yet he understands what it's like to be you and I um, living in this fallen world and to be tempted. And so because he understands firsthand, um, he then can give us the strength and the help that we need when we are tempted. So it's good to know um, that God truly understands. He isn't just saying he understands, but he actually has walked in our shoes. So, you know, if you're tempted to take that next drink as an alcoholic, you can know that uh, Jesus understands what it is to be uh, tempted um, to uh, to overdo um, the drinking of alcohol. Um, if you are a person who you're addicted to a drug and you're looking to take that next pill to try to help you bear up under life's uh, difficulties, you know what it is, or Jesus knows what it is to be tempted in that way. I mean, even when he hung on the cross, um, they offered him gall, um, which was a, a, a mind numbing and pain killing substance, but he refused it. Um, because he wanted to feel the, the, the full weight of humanity's sin and its consequences. And so scripture says that Jesus was tempted in all the ways that we have been tempted, yet he was without sin. He never gave in to the temptation. So we can 
be comforted in knowing that he understands that. Also, the incarnation revealed God to us. I mean, you think about it for a moment. How could our little finite minds uh, understand the infinite God? Uh, there's no way that we can understand the transcendent God fully, but because God, the transcendent God, became human flesh and blood, it helped us to more fully grasp who he is, how to live, and how much he loved us. Um, and so we're able to relate to God becoming man far more than if God had just remained the transcendent God sitting on uh, heaven's throne. And then that brings us to the third reason the incarnation is so important, and, and I just alluded to it, and that is that uh, it shows the depths of God's love. I mean, think about it for a minute. God was complete within himself, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, were totally complete within themselves. They were lacking nothing. Um, and, and yet God chose to uh, leave his throne in heaven, um, become flesh and blood, uh, walk in our shoes, be tempted in the way that we've been tempted, and uh, suffer the absolute uh, tragedy, horrific uh, uh, death of the cross with all of humanity's sin from past, present, and future um, being heaped upon him. And he did all that for you and I because he loved us. Um, incarnation is, a, is a, a deep subject with many facets, but I can only give you just a real brief summary of it now. But um, if you want more uh and deeper understandings of these types of topics. Uh, join us on Sunday mornings at 1030 at uh, New Day Fellowship in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. We meet at Branch Creek Place, 115 North Fayette Street. Um, we're also on Facebook. Uh, we also have our, our website, www.newdayship.org, and we are on YouTube. So come see us. Thanks.